Today on Houston Life, two stars from NBC's Manifest are spilling some secrets ahead of tomorrow night's big season three premiere. Plus, it's Wine Club Wednesday, poured by HEB. We're sharing elegant wines to pair with your Easter brunch, including a bottle of bubbles that's under 10 bucks. And we are getting the juicy scoop from comedian Heather McDonald. Find out who she says is her favorite celebrity to impersonate. And we're hopping into Easter week by learning how to create the perfect Easter baskets at home. All of that and more is happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC 2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm going to do my best to keep it together today. It I is mean. Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. So glad to have you with us. As always, I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Glad you're here for this midweek pick-me-up. All kinds of good stuff. Cheers to Wednesday. Cheers to Wednesday. Cheers to Wine Club Wednesday. And cheers to the last day in March. And last day in your 30s. Hmm? Huh? What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wow. I know. It's hard to believe. Hard you know believe. how all of those, uh, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook, your memories pop up? Mm -hmm. So a photo this morning popped up from 10 years ago when I was celebrating my 30th birthday. And I'm actually much more excited to be starting my 40s than I was to start my 30s. Really? Because I think maybe, you know, you were still evolving. Not that you're not, but I'm saying your career was just starting. And you know what I mean? Different, yeah. different place in life. For sure. And I think in my 20s, I sort of thought I had a lot of things figured out. Oh, yeah. Turns out I didn't. <laughs> now I realize I've always been a disaster. But at 30, you know, I was in a bad relationship. Work was kind of stressful. And not that work's not stressful now. Just kidding. Um, but it's just, I feel like I'm in a more settled part of life now. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Don't let the stress get to you. Hey, did you hear about this study listing the most and least stress, uh, stressed states in America? Are okay. you following me? Does that make sense? Yes, I got you. Which state basically is the most stressed? Is the most stressed out. Okay, so the survey was conducted, and essentially what they did, I think this is really interesting. So they broke down all these different categories. So, of course, you can feel stress as it relates to your job or your relationship, sure. whatever. So work-related stress, money-related stress, family-related stress, and then health and safety. So what they did is they conducted this survey of all 50 states, and then they combine the totals to average out the least and most stressed states in America. Okay. Guess where Texas falls on this list? Hmm. Out of all 50 states? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Are we in the middle? I don't know. Maybe like middle somewhere? We're number 10. As the most stressed? As the most stressed. Really? A lot of stress. And you know, interestingly, Utah comes in at 49th. And South Dakota is the least stressed state. What's the most stressed? Oh, the most stressed is, hold on, I have it right here. It's Nevada. Louisiana is number two. Okay. New Mexico, number three. You can see that list right there. West Virginia, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Tennessee. Interesting, so many states in the South. Uh, California, Kentucky, and Texas. Interesting. I think I need a story on all these people that do the surveys. Why? I don't know. I want to know who they are, how many people they're calling. You know, I want more information well, from this, the surveys. This was a survey conducted by Wallet Hub. In fact, later I'll post it on my Houston Life Facebook page because I think it's really interesting. It's very interesting. I mean, not that it, I mean, I don't know what we learned from that. Like, if you're stressed, you just sort of. You feel alone when you're stressed, I think. Yeah. And you're not. You're not. At all. Totally. And April is Stress Awareness Week. Month. <laughs> stress Awareness Month. <laughs> Unless April somehow became a week. I don't really know. <laughs> we have a stress awareness month? Yes, April. Why do tomorrow. we need that? To be aware of all of our stresses. I'm life. aware of it, gosh dang it. <laughs> Take another sip. Okay, now here's the thing. If you're feeling a little bit stressed out, I'm maybe, not. like you, no. um, we've got a little something that could make you laugh. Mm. You know me. I love a good filter. I love a good kind of TikTok, Instagram. I get lost on these feeds sometimes. Have you heard about the um, pillow face filter? I know you have. Have I know you? I have. Uh, it's trending everywhere. And check this out. Lauren Kelly and our photographer Paul, they were first on the team to try it out. I don't notice anything different about either one of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> come on. They Paul look took exactly me a the second same to, to me. Wow. Paul took me a second. I thought, I don't think he's using the filter. Look at Paul's lips. I know. He's wow. got like the full on duck lip thing happening. It's, I mean, but some people do a lot of filler though. And some so people choose you might... to look this way. Right. And if we didn't know Lauren and Paul, we might think that that was just the way they're. It, it's way just look. the way that it is, right? Well, okay, so I, I decided to check it out. Okay. What? Oh, what work? No, I haven't had any work done. This is me. Oh, natural. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how your personality changed a bit, too. <laughs> I mean, can you even believe it? Well, it's alarmingly <laughs> realistic. It's really alarming. Uh, people might be asking how to do this, but before we tell them how, I got in okay. on the fun as well. Wow, Courtney, your new look was so natural, I decided to do the same thing. And the best part is, these new lips, they double as pool noodles. Just in time for summer. That so, is, um, it's kind of alarming when I first looked at myself <laughs> in that filter. Yeah. So this morning I was messing around with this filter. You go on Instagram like you're going to post a story and you go into the filters and there's a little magnifying glass, search pillow face, and you have to, you know, select that filter. Here's the crazy thing though. So I was messing around and sending videos to, to friends. You remember my ex, Matt? Yes. Tall, gorgeous Matt. So I sent a video to him in California, and he thought that it was real. That it was real. Did what did he respond? He thought back? it was real. He was like, "Girl, what did you do to your oh face?" <laughs> See, it's good to have those kind of people in your circle because sometimes you have people that no one says anything when something's not right. Well, you need the inner circle. Oh yeah, I mean, we have that kind of relationship where we're brutally honest. Right. But I said, "Oh, I, I went to my typical place, Institute of Anti Aging." <laughs> because they do my Botox, right? We love them. But I said, they just used 12 um, syringes oh. of filler. <laughs> it was Only like 12. 12. <laughs> so try it out, and it, it is so realistic, especially, you know, if you need reading glasses to see. Like, you could fool so many people with this. Oh, it's hilarious. And if you follow somebody where they are using that filter, you could just click on the pillow face filter title, and it'll bring up a thing to save to your collection. Well, it's... I feel like this is perfect timing just in time for April Fool's Day. Yes. And we shouldn't make fun of people whose faces do look like they have pool noodles on them because people choose to look like that sometimes. They, some do. Yeah, your face, your choice, right? But I think, though, I think the, I don't know. <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> what are you saying? Nothing. It's just very convincing. So try it out and please DM me and send them to me. Cause yeah. It, it, it would be a morning. good, if you haven't spoken to somebody in a while, that would actually be quite funny. What about all these baby doll filters? I feel like I go through my feed and I see these people who filter their photos and they look, you know, the eyes get bigger. Yeah. And everything, just sort of, the proportions of their face change. And then they don't acknowledge it that they're using that filter. It's like, and then you see them in person and, and <laughs> totally different. So weird. Yeah. We are living that in strange times. That was a lot times. of fun. <laughs> that, that was, was a, a lot, lot of fun, fun. Okay, well, still to come on Houston Life, did you know, Courtney Zavala, today is World Taco Day. That is for real. It is a thing. The list of local spots we all have to try. Been waiting for this day all year. Right now, we're going to check in with Joe Sam, who is getting you ready for the holiday weekend. What's up, Joe? Well, Courtney, Derek, you already know Easter is one of my favorite holidays, and I get really excited about receiving those huge baskets when we're talking to a local company that's going to be showing us some tips on how to up your Easter basket game to make any adult or kid happy to receive them. That's going to be coming up when Houston Life returns. Well, hallelujah, folks. Today is World Taco Day, and if you are looking for a new spot to try out, we do have an article on clicktohouston.com highlighting eight places with such fantastic breakfast tacos they will knock your socks off. A few of them, Kingwood Taco Shop, Brothers Taco House in Edo, and Laredo's Tacos on Washington made the list. Of course, Brothers is right there in Edo on Leland at Emancipation. Be prepared to wait in line because it is always popular 
no yeah. matter when you go. Laredo's is amazing. It has been for years. One of my favorite places in the, the gas station there. So it's awesome. Where else do you recommend? Like if you had to pick a top taco spot? I mean, like picking up and going. I mean, if we're going to sit down and eat a taco, then I would say I'm a Latina. I love their breakfast tacos. Um, if you're driving through, Papa's Barbecue is always really good for breakfast tacos. But my go-to is Maria's Tacos. It's, it's a really small taco shop and I love it. Off where, Pine, where it's is off Maria's? Pinemont. It's amazing. I gotta check it out. It's funny when you're Houstonian I feel like breakfast tacos they might as well be their own food group right? Uh yeah. We eat them all the time so I am a big fan of Brothers in Edo but folks grab a pen and paper write this down. Brass Tax in Edo. Okay. Brass Tax. It's a coffee shop during the day but it also becomes like a bar restaurant so you could get l breakfast lunch and dinner there um, and cocktails in the evening. They have my favorite breakfast tacos in Houston, which is saying a lot because we have so many good ones. Right, right. But they have these ho the house-made salsa that they make in the back, and I always get potato, egg, and cheese. Love it. On a wheat tortilla. I wake up craving those right. breakfast tacos. It's on Live Oak and Texas right there in Edo. Go check oh, it out. Oh, now I'm hungry. You gotta come visit and we'll like do a, a weekend Saturday morning. You can check out Brass Tacks. Beautiful plants. I'd love plants. to come visit you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna book a trip. <laughs> I'm gonna book one. I don't get it, what's happening? No, I'm teasing. We I would like love that. I'm gonna from each other. We do, and yeah. we could ride bikes. We could do that. I love that. Bikes and breakfast tacos. Mm. How about that? I like it. Okay. Okay, we do want to hear from you. Where is the best place you think to get a taco in Houston? It doesn't necessarily have to be a breakfast taco, but that was basically the category. Yeah. You know, the World Taco Day, right? But category was breakfast tacos. And let us know by heading to our Facebook uh, page for your answer. You could be read on air a little bit later on in the show. Yeah. I can eat Mexican food, breakfast, lunch, Daily. and dinner. Daily. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, shifting gears now to Easter. Can you believe it is only a few days away now? And creating Easter baskets is a festive tradition for the entire family. Yeah, and there's a few procrastinators out there. Yeah. Uh, Joe Sam is at a local shop in Pasadena giving us some simple tips to make those baskets really pop. Hi, Joe. Hey, Courtney, Derek. So this is something that my family, we do all the time just before Easter Sunday. We get all of our favorite things and we make those baskets, really get people excited about it. But guess what? There's a local shop that's been here for 20 years doing it for everyone. We're speaking Miss Danelle right now with do-it-yourself gift baskets. And we have some beautiful Easter baskets here. You're going to show us how to up our game with the Easter baskets. So really quickly, tell us what do we need to do when we're upping it from the regular baskets to something that's a little bit more creative. You, what you really want to do is find something usable, something that the kids are going to keep and they're going to want to use, even for the adults too. Like this one, we've got a cute little shopping cart filled with lots of candies and oh, toys. Oh yeah. So the basket is, is not going to be thrown away. It's not going to go in an attic or a garage. They'll be able to keep this and use it. She can eat everything in here and then use that to put all her baby dolls in after and play around with something that continues to give day after day after day. That's Absolutely. something really important. And all of these products, you can even see this one over here. This is a gigantic, huge basket here that we see. You get a lot of those products done here at do it, design it yourself. Yes, absolutely. Let's go ahead and check out some of those products right now. We have an entire room that you have filled with so many different things in there. Give us another quick tip about stuffing these and making them look so beautiful as far as they are stacked. We. It, that's a little tricky. <clears throat> um, we use boxes. We, we can layer with boxes and everybody can use boxes at home too. And we stuff with paper to make them nice and big and tall. And those that don't have a lot of the products that we have, um, glue dots, they can use tape and mm. stack them and make them high and tall. So we're going to check out all of these amazing products that she has up here in her stock room so that we can get ready to design our own basket for Easter. She's going to give us some more tips on how to make it look really, really festive and make it look really e elaborate and elegant for this holiday season. For right now, we're going to go send things back to you guys. I'm going to try and not eat all the candy that they have here. <laughs> all right, Joe. Good luck with that. You know, Easter candy is my favorite. It's so good. Out of the entire season. All right, Joe. We'll see you in just a bit. Still to come on Houston Life, we have got Houston Life viewers, wine club members, and sisters, Marissa and Maddie, standing by. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful they are. We're going to meet them and get to know them over a glass or two of wine. And after the break, get ready to laugh along with comedian Heather McDonald. Find out what she's been doing with the family during quarantine when Houston Life returns.
When it comes to celebrity gossip and reality TV drama, no one delivers the juicy scoop quite like Heather McDonald. She's uh, the headlining comedian with a long list of TV and film credits to her name, plus two stand-up specials, two best-selling books, and a very popular podcast. She is so talented and so much fun. We recently had a chat with Heather by Zoom and reminded her... Oh dear, of the very first time she appeared on Houston Life more than four years ago. <laughs> you came to Houston Life years ago when the show first started, okay? And I know you probably don't remember this because you said before, before this interview you didn't quite remember. Do you remember going to do a mall show? Like a, a TV show in a mall? Oh yes! Yes, okay, I totally remember. You had a little studio in the mall. Yes, of course. We had a little studio in the mall, and somehow it was not conveyed to you that we were in the mall, so you drove all the way to our, our Channel 2 studio off the freeway first. Then you came to the mall, and I remember everything was so last minute. We might end up in the show tonight. Yeah, I was just going to say, these, <laughs> well, these two idiots on the show I was on about today. About doing a talk show in the mall. This is pretty... In the, <laughs> I, you've it's always insane, wanted to it? work at the mall, and now you finally do have I do have to say, I love Nordstrom, and I will be going in there before I oh, leave. We All I remember is someone yelling, like, five, four, sit down, sit down. And the look on your face, you're like, what, 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 what do I do? And you were like, I felt like we had traumatized you. And to this day, we all get nervous uh, anytime we hear your name, because we're like, oh, Heather McDonald, I think she still hates us, she still hates us. But Oh, no, not at all. Look, I'm so glad that anybody even wants me to appear on anything, do any TV shows, come to my shows. No, I... I remember that was just sort of confusing, but it didn't bother me at all. I was still happy to get the word out to have people come to the shows, you know? But any anybody that's gonna tell someone that I have a stand-up show and so that the place is as full as COVIDly possible, then great. Well, and just, just to clarify too, we were confused as well, so you weren't the only one who was confused. And now we are not in the mall anymore. We actually do Good. have a television studio, so please come and see us in our studio sometime. You're always welcome. Yes, absolutely. When I look back at your credit list, Heather, it really is staggering. So many roles in TV and film. You've worked with Chelsea Handler, the Wayans Brothers, your stand-up special that's out on Amazon, two New York Times best-selling books out there. And of course, we can't forget all of your impressions that you do and your reenactments of reality shows that then go viral. You have such an incredible gift. I know you've been married for more than 20 years. I find it so hard to believe that before you found uh, this gift, you were working in real estate? Well, I was doing, my parents were a realtor couple. And so I was pursuing stand-up comedy and everything else um, because it was a, a somewhat of a flexible job. So that made it, it was kind of, you know, it was, it was a good, safe environment to have because I would be about to go on a listing appointment with my parents, but then I would, you know, stop off to do an audition and my mom would run lines with me. So I was really lucky that I was from LA and I kind of had that safe um, foundation to pursue comedy and writing and acting, you know, but while also having uh, somewhat of a normal paycheck. It's so great. And I love how real and raw you are. My husband and I are big fans of yours. We always used to love watching you on Chelsea, just giggling and, and just, you know, the talent that you have to put a skit like that together um, for so many years. But then I forget, wow, yeah, you're a mom. Your stepdaughter is 21, teenage boys. I mean, like, do they know how cool you are? I hope they do. Um, no, I don't think that they do, but I have uh, recruited them to do some of the things. Um, we are obsessed with Below Deck as a family, mostly because my son can't believe that people pay $50,000 for two <laughs> days of fun in which the crew then humiliates them and calls them cougars and horrible <laughs> people. So we like to watch that show, and we actually did a whole parody of it um and my boys were the crew and i was captain sandy and i played two roles i played captain sandy and a cougar guest and you know they go along with it pretty much i try not to exploit them too much but just enough that um you know they they let me pretend i pretend that um i i'm the bachelorette and they are my suitors i mean it's just 
And then, you know, I just say, hey, if I was a farmer, you'd have to wake up at five and pick corn. I'm not. <laughs> so this is what you have to do as part of helping the family business, which is Juicy Scoop and my stand up career. So they're pretty they're pretty great sports. Um, but no, the, I don't think anybody in this business there. I don't think anybody's kids are their biggest fans. Definitely not. <laughs> well, I think it sounds like a blast to be in your family. So if you're looking for a sibling, you know, the sidekick, the crazy uncle, I'm happy I to love play it. that role. I love it. Y young, young uncle to the kids, big brother or something. Yeah. Oh, you're too kind. Well, Heather, listen, before we let you go, because we're almost out of time, out of all of the impressions that you've done, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to do it, but do you have a favorite? Well, Drew Barrymore is by far my favorite. I've been doing her the longest. Um, because I, her point of view is very easy for me to understand, I like to improv a lot as her. And now, of course, she has a talk show. And God bless her. You know, she launched this talk show during the pandemic. So she's got the Zoom audience like we've got going right now. And, um, but she's still so positive. So everything you want to, anything you want to talk about, she's so excited. Like, today is going to be crochet day and we are going to learn how to crochet and i am i'm a crochet novice i'm not great at this but i'm truly obsessed and you're like my god girl i am so happy you're this happy about crocheting like it's just kind of amazing she's extremely likable and uh she's just fun for me to do you know we're kind of the same age i kind of look like her so she's just sort of my favorite to do. And she's been around for so long and she will be forever. So I love doing people that are like, you know, classic and likable. Just like you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I still can't, I mean, even your mouth moves like Drew's. It's incredible. Well, listen, Heather Thank McDonald, you. it's so great to see you. We want to remind our viewers, you can also, of course, duh, subscribe to the podcast, Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. You will be glad you did. It's in its fifth year, 500 episodes, 60 million downloads and counting. Congrats, Heather McDonald. And trust me, Courtney Thank and I you. are relieved you don't hate us. Oh my God, absolutely not. Love you. Okay. I went shopping after the, after that at the mall. Did you really? It's a great mall. Yes. Just okay. bizarre for a TV show. <laughs> yes. All right, Heather, great to see you. Thank you. She's so much fun. And a new episode of her podcast drops tomorrow on Thursday, the first of the month. She is hilarious she and sure a, is. always has really great, timely things to talk about, too. Her Jennifer Aniston impression, too. Is so good. Spot on. Yeah. Love her. Okay, we're going to check in with Lauren Kelly now for a look at what's ahead with her interview with some of the NBC stars. Hi, Lauren. Hey, guys. Still to come, all the action-packed drama of Manifest returns tomorrow night, and I am chatting with stars Josh Dallas and Athena Karkanis about their big season three premiere. Plus, we'll have a look at what's coming up for the news at four. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Wine Club Wednesday. A lot of fun to get to today at 3.30. That's right, 3.30 on the dot. Time now to hear some of your responses to our question of the day. We asked about the best places in town to get a taco. Here's what some of you had to say, starting with Marte. Tacos La Bala has some of the best authentic barbacoa tacos out there. Mm. Have my whole office hooked, and now we get them every week for our meeting. Ooh, Fun when's tradition. the meeting? We'll be right there. We'll be at that meeting. <laughs> Danny writes in, late night or in the day, Taco Nazo has been there forever, and the tastes have been very consistent. I love the one on Fulton. And look at that line right there. It looks like some happy customers. Mark writes in, our kitchen. Hmm, girlfriend can't eat beef, so I make taco meat with 99% fat-free ground Ooh, turkey. So Add spices that I mix, and it's Taco Tuesday. Okay, Mark, we're going to need your spice recipe. And your address will be right over. Mm -hmm. uh, my, and Joanne writes in, my go-to orders at Bob's Taco Stand in Rosenberg. Another great, I've been to this one. It's been a while. She gets one bacon, egg, and cheese taco, and one carne guisada. Mm. I shouldn't have skipped lunch today. Now I'm you just should, craving know, tacos. But just think of the food you're going to eat later. That's right. Tacos. tacos. <laughs> All right, we're going to check in with Keith, Christine, and Frank for a look at what they have coming up for the news at 4. Are you hungry yet? Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. Mm. Hopefully you know, it won't like, be raining tacos. I feel tacos. like tacos... <laughs> 
is one of the uh, the foods that you want to eat no matter how, if you're hungry or not. You know what I mean? You're like, you see it. Like, it's like pizza. Yeah, you, oh, you're yeah. Like, you, yeah. Can, you convince yourself, I have room for at least one. Yeah, totally. I can never pass yeah, up a good taco. Great to see you guys um, <laughs> on this Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Dreary Wednesday at that. Uh, Frank, what, what's the rest of the week looking like as we get head to oh, Easter? Oh, well, it's only going up from here. Right? Okay. I'm going to go to, to Damaris for tacos. Oh, nice. They do barbecue brisket tacos. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Like it's a little different touch, but it's really good. Uh, it's windy out there at the coast. Look at this. Wind advisories from 4 o'clock uh, today until 9 o'clock tomorrow. Some gusts to 40 with winds sustained 20 to 30. That's there on the uh, islands. And then the waters under gale warnings for even higher winds and 5 to 8 foot sea. So watch out there, especially mariners. In the meantime, there's the front. It is pushed on through, and you can see that's where we're finding it now. Stretches on back through Louisiana into Alabama where they have severe thunderstorm watches. So we've really missed it as far as any severe weather. In fact, rain's been hard to find. If you've had more than a quarter of an inch, you're one of the few. That high is going to continue to bring in sunshine as we go into tomorrow and Friday. And the winds will begin to calm down for us. They're still pretty stout out there for a lot of us. You can see those gray skies, 18 mile an hour winds in Sugarland with temperatures in the 60s, still warm in Galveston. So you haven't gotten that cool down just yet. 15 mile an hour winds, Conroe and 13 in Huntsville. So we've had a temperature change in the last 24 hours, which is 20 degrees cooler right now than it was this time yesterday in Liberty. 15 degrees cooler in Sugarland, 13 in Tomball. So a big cool down. If you're going to walk the dog, hang on to the leash. It's breezy. Temperatures fall through the 60s to 58 by 7. Then we're looking for 40s overnight. We'll talk about that coming up at 4. It's going to be breezy tonight. It's going to be chilly overnight. And then we have sunshine stays cool again tomorrow. And then we warm up toward Easter. And I'll have the full weekend forecast coming up. All right, All right. Frank, sounds good. All right, here's a look at some of the other stories we are covering for you at 4 o'clock this afternoon. He is the son of Hollywood legend Tom Hanks. And this afternoon, we are learning Ch uh, Chet Hanks has gotten into some legal trouble here in the Houston area. He's accused of abusing and threatening his girlfriend at their home in Sugarland. What else we're learning from court documents? Pfizer has released new information about the effectiveness of its COVID vaccine in children, specifically children aged 12 to 15. Coming up at 4, we will show you how that effectiveness compares to adults who get the vaccine. Plus, a high school teacher agrees to get a less than desirable haircut after making a promise to one of his students. The motivation behind that teacher's promise coming up at 4 o'clock, you guys. Paying the piper. <laughs> oh, interesting. Very curious about that haircut. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we'll see you at 4 o'clock. All right. Well, you know what that sound means. It is happy hour here in Studio B. And today's Wine Club Wednesday, poured by HEB, we are highlighting bottles that will pair perfectly with your plans for Easter brunch. And it's not going to break the bank mm -hmm. either. We're going to have our HEB wine specialist join us a little bit later in the show for a tasting. But first, let's get to know today's Wine Club members from Friendswood. And a big welcome to sisters Marissa and Maddie. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hi. Thank you. Great Hi. to see you. I love the backdrop in your wine tasting room. <laughs> and okay, you guys are zooming in from Friendswood. We know that you watch the show, but you call yourself the Twisted Sisters. How come? <laughs> well, mainly other people call it. <laughs> <laughs> Just for fun. For fun. To be silly. Well, you two look like so much fun, and I got to tell you, we were spying on you during commercial breaks, and uh -oh. we saw the laugh attack that you both had, <laughs> and we knew, we knew you would fit in very well here at Houston Life. What were you laughing about? Will you tell us and our viewers? We laughed because we already messed up. <laughs> you did, you no, know, you did not mess up. We waved too soon, and then <laughs> we're scared because we waved too soon. Oh, listen, don't be scared. Y'all are going to do a great job. And I think it is so cool. You grew up in a big Italian family in the Texas City area, three siblings. And what's great is now you all live in Friendswood in like a two to five mile radius from one another. So I understand you get together all the time. Food, wine <laughs> is involved. We that do. is true. That is true. We and celebrate big and we celebrate often. That so. is so good because, in, in, as we know, in the last year, we need any <laughs> reason to celebrate. What's happening there? What's that picture? I was loving the wine I was with. Perfect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I love that you guys get together. Tell us about the group that you get together with. You have your own wine club Wednesdays. That's your thing. So before COVID, we were getting together quite often. Um, different area wineries and restaurants around town. 
and just joining together we're kind of unified in wine and getting to know new people and know different wines and they would you know give us tastings and and it was really a lot of fun good way to meet people yeah, a fun we tradition. We a lot of new people in the neighborhood that way. It's fun. I'm sure, I'm sure you are the most fun in the neighborhood. Quick mm -hmm. shout out to U of H. Marissa, you attended there along with your sons. Well, I, I'm, I'm assuming you sons. went before your yes, sons did. did. Um, so cheers to the team, sending good vibes to them. But before we meet our wine expert and take a quick commercial break, I understand that when it comes to wine, you two are typically polar opposites in terms of what you like. Typically, but we like to taste and try yeah. new things. And but I haven't do. met many I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Well, we've got a couple for you to try today on our Wine Club Wednesday. So, Marissa and Maddie, stay right there because after the break, our HEB wine specialist will join us and share why today's wines will pair perfectly with our Easter spreads this weekend. Don't go away. Houston Life will be right back. Welcome back. We have been hanging out with Marissa and Maddie. They are sisters and members of our wine club poured by HEB. And we are now joined by HEB wine specialist Nicholas Perkins, who is sharing the perfect wine pairings for our Easter brunch, including Nicholas, this bottle of bubbles we've been drinking under 10 bucks. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But first, tell us all about yourself, because uh, I met you a couple weeks ago at the HEB in the Heights. Uh, that's correct. So I'm the HEB wine steward uh, in the Heights. I've been with HEB for about five years. Um, worked first at our Montrose location and grand opened this store about two and a half years ago. Well, let's jump right in because we're Derek's already drinking his. I know the ladies have theirs. Let's start with the Cava. And for people, this is a sparkling and explain what the Cava is. So Cava is a, a sparkling wine that's made in an area of Spain uh, around Barcelona. Uh, by law, it has to be made in the traditional method, so it follows the same production processes as actual champagne, but it's an incredible value. I mean, this, this champagne, or sparkling wine, excuse me, comes in around $8, um, and it drinks beautifully on its own, but it's also wonderful for mimosas, French 75s, any champagne cocktails that you might want to make at home. This is so lovely. It's great for a brunch. It's going to stand up well. We want to say what the label is. It's Arte Latino Cava. Um, and eight dollars. I mean, what a power um, that this has. And ladies, what do you think? I love it. It's an amazing price point for such an elegant, soft. I like the bubbles, bubbly. <laughs> it is. It has that really nice, fine, small bead, which um, certainly uh, is indicative of the quality of the of the, the wine itself. Really soft. It's good. Well, and I understand Nicholas too. A fun fact about this: this wine is aged for at least a year in underground caves that's correct and, and that's um most cavas are going to be aged uh, uh underground in a cave the word cava itself actually means cave in spanish uh, so it's kind of cool we're drinking something that's been underground uh, in a cave in spain somewhere oh my gosh cava means cave yes you knew that i had no idea <laughs> i learned all kinds of things on this television show What's it's so cool great one? this is this tastes much more expensive this is, does not seem like an eight dollar bottle of uh cava so i love it yeah. definitely a winner and you know courtney and i we love our bubbles we Seems do like marissa and maddie do too okay we only have a minute left <laughs> Let's get to this Pinot Noir. So this is a Rose Rock, Oregon Pinot Noir, right, Nicholas? Correct. It's made by the Druin family. Uh, they made wine in Burgundy for over 100 years, but have been making wine in Oregon now for several decades. Um, and it's absolutely delicious. It pairs wonderful with um, Easter uh, dishes such as lamb, salmon, ham. Um, and it's wonderful. You really get that, that nice uh, uh, kind of crushed flower notes, clove on the nose with with lots of bright red fruit, like bright cherry, raspberry, uh, and it's, it's wonderful. It really is lovely. It's light. And ladies, what do you think? Are you a fan of red? Oh. Yes. I love red, too. Okay, we'll I, what I think up. is great, it's light. It's not heavy at all. It is light. And the price point, Nicholas, on this is a little more expensive, about $35. So maybe a nice bottle to take to a dinner party in a friend's home or something, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But worth every penny. It's, it's, it's just wonderful Oregon fruit done in a really nice way. 
Okay, well, we do want to remind our viewers that uh, the HEB wine favorite sale is going on leading up to Easter. So now through April 6th, all HEB wine favorites are 15% off when you buy six bottles or more. Look for the wine favorite tag on the shelf. It's also great too because then, you know, folks like Nicholas, the professionals, you already know their top picks, right? You just look for that favorites label. Absolutely. And if you'd like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEB, all you have to do is visit our website. You'll have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings, just like our two guests today. All right, Marissa, Maddie, Nicholas, cheers to all three of you. And thanks for joining us on our Wine Club Wednesday. Thank cheers. you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. And cheers. cheers to you, Courtney. I know I started cheers. drinking my wine That's a little okay. too early today, but it happened. Okay, well, as a reminder, you can find today's featured wines at your local HEB. All right, so do you know what else this wine is pretty great for? A TV night at home. Oh, yeah. Lauren Kelly has a look at the new season of the hit show and on NBC. Lauren, what can we expect from the season premiere? Well, with all the action-packed drama of NBC's manifest, Courtney, you're definitely going to need the wine. The show returns for its third season tomorrow night, and two of the show's stars, Josh Dallas and Athena Karkanis, are spilling some secrets ahead of the big episode. Season three picks up three months after season two finishes. So we have three main takeaways from season two. One, Ben had a calling where the plane exploded. Two, the idea that if we follow the callings, we can beat our death date. And three, that tail fin that was pulled out of the ocean. What is it? Where did it come from? We all saw that plane explode on the tarmac in New York City. So what does that mean for the flight? What does that mean for the passengers? Okay, Josh, I know you're saying we're gonna get into that, but uh, hello, are we gonna get some answers this season? I promise you, right here, right now, I promise you that you will get answers. You will get a few answers this season. Just spill the beans right now, Athena, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Don't okay. do it, Athena, don't ahead. do it. <laughs> no, I was just going to say it's very hard to talk about season three because there are so many twists and turns and surprises and everything is like so engaging and pulling you along. But it's all, you know, it's hard to talk about it because everything is a spoiler because so much happens in season three. So, yes, you will get answers, but you will also get more questions. As an actor and an actress on a show like this, are you allowed to read through the entire script or are you learning basically at the same time as viewers what is happening? Yeah, that's exactly it. We get the scripts just before we start to shoot the episode. We are like, we're getting surprised and pulled along uh, just like you guys are. Well, tell everybody about where Ben and Grace are this season. I think uh, this season, Ben and Grace start off more stronger and more together than ever. Uh, I think as we move through the whole of season three, that's the case. And uh, which raises the stakes because they are constantly fighting off outside pressures uh, to their family. So the stronger they are together, uh, the, the higher the stakes go. Well, Athena, is there a moment in this season that you're really looking forward to fans seeing the most? Oh, the season finale oh. is so good. I mean, Don't you is... do that to us! That's a whole season! I'm sorry, but you're gonna have but to watch the true. whole season. But it's true. But I mean, the whole season is is very exciting, but that season finale, like it's, it's amazing that they managed to top every episode kind of gets more and more intense. And um, the season finale is really, they really nailed it. NBC's Manifest returns for its third season full of all that action-packed drama tomorrow night at 7 p.m. right here on KPRC2. You guys, I've been following this show from the beginning. Yeah. It's a good one. It it's is. It's a real good one. Yeah. It's also a great show. If people haven't seen any of the episodes, go back and stream it because that very first episode, oh. I already have kind of a fear of flying. Yeah, it locks you in, doesn't and it? And I think I still sort of have nightmares about that episode, <laughs> but it's so good. So good. So that was a good it. sell, Derek. That was, <laughs> watch it. It's terrible. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, we're going to check in now with Joe Sam, who's helping us get ready for Easter morning. Hi, Joe. 
Hey guys, so yeah, when we come back, we're gonna give you some more tips on how to stuff your Easter baskets to make it look very organized, neat, and extra fancy for your family members. All of that and more when Houston Life returns. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We're getting you ready for Easter, and we're doing so by talking to Design It Yourself. Danielle is going to be giving us some information on how to actually make our baskets. We're looking at this one right here as our model basket, so you're going to teach me how to actually get it to that level with some simple tips. So go ahead and start explaining to me what I need to do first. You kind of already got started with the stuffing inside, as you can see, which levels it all out, just give it that extra height. Yes. So what else do I need to do next? So most people at home don't have a lot of our products, so you use tape. All right. So you're going to take a little tape, roll it. Okay, a nice simple double roll That's up here. It. And put it behind the product. So we have our favorite peeps. Everybody loves the peeps, so we're and gonna put it there. And place it right below, perfect. That's it. All right, awesome. and this is gonna help it from moving all around, correct? Yes. yes. All right, and what do we do next? We just continue to layer, right? Yes, so you'll do you want to make it look like that basket, you're going to use your sour patch next and put it in the corner. Now, when we talk about doing this here, I see all of the different heights. So you want to start from the taller items on down to the shorter ones, correct? Absolutely. You want to be able to see all the products in the basket. This is actually really, really cool. So for people who are doing this at home, what's another tip that you would give them to make sure that their baskets come out looking like these amazing baskets that we see here? Just make sure that everything is taped and secure um, and Make sure that when you put the cello bag on it, it's nice and tight. Nice and tight, because you don't want all of these products falling out and rolling all around when you do do the travel. Now, of course, I'm not as good as this here, so, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people who are doing this themselves at home may have a couple of struggles with some of the baskets. You want your basket to look really nice. So where can they go if they don't want to do this themselves? Where can they go to actually get you guys to do this for them? Our website is designityourselfgiftbaskets.com. And we are 100% customizable. We've got hundreds of baskets to choose from online. Um, chocolate, gourmet, candy, tons of candy baskets. And if they don't like what they see, they can give us a call and we can customize a basket just for them. Okay, I think mine is looking a little messy. We're just trying to get it to look as pretty as we can, but as you can see, it, 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 it doesn't look that bad. I think <laughs> I did a pretty good job compared to the one that we have here. We're kind of close. Not bad. Ms. Danelle, thanks so much for all of this information. I think I'm going to take this one home, and we're going to wish everybody a happy Easter as well. Yes. Courtney, Derek, I kind of, I, I'll give myself maybe a 5 out of 10 <laughs> compared to the basket that we see here. Look, it's Look all that. that counts as what's okay. inside. <laughs> all right, Joe, thanks. Exactly. <laughs> Good enough to eat. All right, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show, including a local teen starring in a brand new Nickelodeon series. But first, we're going to check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Derek and Courtney, tune in to ET Tonight. We have Britney Spears in tears over her revealing documentary. Plus, a real housewife gets arrested and Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer become superheroes. That is tonight at 630 right here on KPRC2. Now sit tight, Houston Life. It'll be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, guys, I am so excited about this. We're going to be chatting with Sugarland actor Nathan Janik about his hilarious new role in Nickelodeon's new comedy series, Drama Club. He is one of my favorite guests of all time. He is so funny. His impersonations are amazing. I'm glad we're catching up with him, too. Plus, experience the thrill of the historic Apollo 13 mission in an all-new escape room opening in Space City. Have you been to an escape room? I have, only once. Me, too, once. Did you get out? No. Neither did I. Mm -mm. No. There's but a lot of math involved in mine, so you know where I just sat in the corner. They're really cool, though. <laughs> they are. It's a fun challenge. All right, before we go, let's get look one, one more look, rather, at what you had to say about our question of the day. We asked, where's the best place in town to get a taco? Here's what some of you had to say. Kevin writes in, wow, Tex Beria boys all day, every day? I hope I pronounced that 
correctly. We but need to get more information on we that We need one. to get more information. Sorry, Kevin, if I butchered that. Uh, Michelle writes in, believe it or not, I absolutely love Jack in the Box tacos, oh. LOL. Michelle, my mom does too. Okay. Of course, good. it is World Taco Day. You just keep the emodium handy. That's my <laughs> advice. Caroline <laughs> writes in, via Arconis on navigation, best breakfast tacos she's ever had ever. Okay. Well, that's a strong vote of confidence right there. Some good suggestions today. That's right. Good to see you. We're going to send it over to Keith and Christine for the news at four. I would say someone failed because it's World Taco Day and we don't have tacos right now. Or margaritas. Oh my gosh. I mean, the two go hand in hand, you right? You had to bring that up. That's <laughs> fire. Very good point. <laughs> right? Cheers to that. Well, cheers, cheers to, to that. Well, having no tacos. Well, <laughs> sad. Dinner time's right around the corner. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> this is out. my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid diet, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah.